Well, it's a good day, and we're continuing with our story about on the family farm with Joe in favor, and it says it's been a long time since uh, Joe in favor had been called to work out on the farm, as with the new tractor being in, taking his place of doing the heavy work. Joe, Joe seemed to be sad, but Favor spent his days checking out the limits of the pasture. The fall slipped into winter, and Farmer Brown was singing some new songs about jingle bells and white Christmas. Then he would sing some songs that had been practicing in church. What's that song Farmer Brown is singing? Well, I asked a question about that Mary, did you know that your baby boy would a lot of things that I've not heard before? I don't know much about it. Are we going to to the party at the, at the church so we can find out what the Christmas singing is all about? I think so. As I heard Farmer Brown talking to Jimmy about getting the sleigh ready for the snow. And that means we're going back to work again when the snow comes. Christmas time's coming, Christmas time's coming, Christmas time's coming. Farmer Brown came into the barn just to sing. Christmas time's a giving, and because Jesus gave us so much, I dreamed of helping the kids over to children's home, Joe. You and Favor are going to help me. Well, we're going to take a ride over to the home and see if my idea will work. Favor snorted. We'll find out. I know. Joe did not even reply as he prepared for this new adventure. After being harnessed and hooked up to the wagon, Farmer Brown asked Miss Brown if she wanted to go. But it was a bit too cold, and it wasn't Sunday, so that was out of her normal routine. We soon arrived at the home where the children were in the front yard playing some kind of kickball. We waited as Farmer Brown went inside and saw several people looking out the window at us, and I got a feeling something was changing in our world. I felt something pulling on my tail, and Favor was twitching as a youngster came over to him. What's going on? In a few minutes, Farmer Brown and another gentleman came out, picked a couple of the boys, and put them on our backs. Farmer Brown kept the reins tight on favor, and then he looked into my eyes to see how I was reacting. We walked around a bit, and several of the boys got a chance to ride. The men talked for a long time and then shook hands, and we were on our way back home. We were home, safe secure in our stalls, wondering about what the day's events would unfold. Life sure can be uncertain. I'm so glad that I trust Farmer Brown. That ends this part of the story. But Brian and I are going to have a little talk, and we're going to ask your help to help us tell the story. Tell the story of what happens when you reach that inroad and you don't think you're loved anymore or find a place. But you know, God knows how to do those kinds of things. And perhaps you've gone through some tough times. You know, perhaps there's someone like Farmer Brown that's come into your life and had an influence in your life. But you know, the one that makes the difference is God Almighty. So Brian's going to join me and going to pull up a chair over here. Me sir. Is it on us? Yeah, I think so. Has that got you what you want, Brian? Uh. That got you what you want? I don't look too dark, do I? <laughs> Well, I don't know. We better put a little light on the subject there. <laughs> well, I'm a little too dark. Right. We got the sunlight. Yeah. How's that look? Is that better to you? I don't know. I can't see from here. Is it on both of us? <laughs> yeah, I can see me a little bit there. Yeah, there you go.
So what do you think, Brian? Um, for me doing ever since part one to part eight, it's definitely an interesting story, and I definitely you definitely learn some life skills from it of listening to God and um, being obedient. Have you ever heard of things changing somebody's name? Well, you know, it's all through the Bible. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when God cut covenant with a man named Abram, he became Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he took part of God's name and put it in because his name was Jehovah. If, if you could talk about God's name, Jehovah or Yahweh, he would took portion of God's name and put it into Abra, Abraham, Abram's name and became Abraham. Mm -hmm. But Abram, when God would say how, who is, what it was his name, he was the God of Abraham, Isaac. then Isaac, and then Jacob. Jacob. He went through that lineage and every, the lineage that he came, every lineage that God had a part in, he blessed. God has got a blessing. So that influenced me when I was writing about this story. But um, Joe in favor, uh, you know, that happens a lot because I had, a, when I was growing up, I had, my uncle had an old mule. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to, he used to pull the sled through the tobacco rows and things like that. And we used him a lot, things like that. And, uh, but all the animals, the end that I, were things that I had experiences as a child. And, uh, and the 1952 red belly Ford tractor, that's what my uncle, uncle Clyde had. And so, but anyway, but it ended up that the story ended that, uh, Joe and Faber were over there at that, that children's home. Mm -hmm. And they didn't quite like that because, you know, children don't know how to approach animals too much. They don't know what to do, they wanna, they wanna feed them, but everyone, even the animals are nervous. If you see a new animal and you go up to them, you, you kind of cautious and they're kind of cautious with you. True. But that's the way it is when you meet new people because you never know whether a person is going to be friendly or hurt you. And uh, life experiences go along like that. But, but here was a person like Farmer Brown. He was a Christian man. And I've had many Christian people that have influenced my life. And because I found them to be patient, gentle, and kind. And perhaps some of you people, that uh, you may have known somebody like that. They were kind and gentle. But perhaps you were like Joe before he got to meet Farmer Brown, they would come up there and hit him and abuse him and just see what he would do to, to hurt him, to see how an animal would react. Um, I've heard many stories like those kinds of things, the cruelty to animals. But uh, Joe was always uh, loyal and he, as, as we called him, crazy. And he began to find that, that Farmer Brown treated him well and he began to have the respect. But sometimes those old feelings and the old things, because in this life, you do have uh, obstacles, and there is a devil in this world that tries to, uh, he comes along and kills, steal, and destroy, the Bible says. But Jesus came along that you might have life, and that life abundantly. And um, so God is good. As we've learned from this story, it happens, but some things, sometimes things don't turn out exactly the way we want to, but we have to trust God and trust in uh, the way his nature is, and uh, that's good. Oh, yeah. So you got any questions for us? No. Um, so where, where do you think um, they will go from here? Well, that's where I, I need some help from some of the viewers. Where do you think that uh, some jobs that... Uh, Joe and uh, Favor could do. Do you think that they might be in a parade or they go out and let the kids uh, uh, ride them? Uh, or do, do you think their days on the farm 
are pretty much over now that the tractor is done all is doing all the heavy work. What do you think? Could you give us some suggestions and tell help us to tell the rest of the story? Definitely. You got anything else? How how did this feel seeing me on the other side of <laughs> the camera? Right. Well, one of the things is because of my age, you see, I can't do what I used to do. And that's something that happens when you get, you know, up in age and you just get out and you get to the point where if you don't, if you don't, the Bible says, if you know, people perish for lack of a vision, mm -hmm. a vision for tomorrow, a future. And many times you go through roads that you hit a dead end. What do you have to do? You have to turn around and you go back the same way you came and try to find another path, something that motivates you. What, what motivates you in life? Well, you could tell when Dane, when Joe was down, food didn't motivate him. He was, he was depressed because he thought his life was over. True. And he thought maybe he might be headed for the glue factory. Yeah. And um, sometimes when you lose your skills or your abilities, and Brian, you have issues that you've had to learn how to deal with your 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 with your center vision, mm -hmm. and, and so you've had to learn how to adjust to find other ways to accomplish things that motivate you and stimulate your interest and your your passion. Because God created us all different to do different. If we were all the same, you know, boy, it'd be a boring world. Yeah, it really will. Yeah, <laughs> it really will. It's kind of like when you play a play a. Uh, uh, a piano, you hit one note. If everybody sang that one note, it'd be, but, but there's a harmony. And that's another story. But you can go into something that harmonizes with that and it makes brings life into the one note. So you have more than two notes, maybe three notes, maybe four notes. And they all sound similar, but they blend together to make a, a, uh, a beautiful composition, a beautiful sound. And it takes us all to make things happen in this earth. That's why God makes us each and different and unique. Definitely. Yeah, because by me being, how, like having back in generation, it definitely teaches me that there's no reason to just stop and just, no, you and can. just keep going. You can. And, um, but there's another thing, it's uh, thing, something called fear. False evidence appearing real. But God has given us something else. It's called faith. Faith is believing that God is with you. Mm -hmm. And as you spend time with him, you begin to find. Just like Joe in favor, they were bad to remember that God was for them, mm -hmm. not against him. Sure. Well, I hope you send those questions in or suggestions in so that we know where to take Joe in favor because they need to get out from just sitting around in the pasture looking for something to do. They need to be valuable, need to be valuable to me and as to you. Perhaps they can help tell your story along life's way. Definitely. For me, that's all I've got to say. <laughs> Brian, if you'll sign us off here. All right, so comment below if you would like to continue to hear more. And like Pop said, to let us know um, how things supposed to, how you think things supposed to go at the end. So definitely comment below or email me and we holler at y'all later. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment. Peace. And we out.
But when it melts, the other ways will show. Take that aside.